हेलो वेलकम बैक टू द सीरीज ऑफ डिस्कशंस ऑन एम सी क्यूज ऑन इंग्लिश पोएम्स टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस फिफ्टीन एम सी क्यू क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम एक्सपेंसेस वन डे आई रोट हन एम अपन द स्टैंड द वीडियो इज गोइंग टू बी हेल्पफुल फॉर द एस्पायरेंस ऑफ वेस्ट बेंगल एस एल एस टी एग्जामिनेशन हाउवर द वीडियो इज ऑल्सो गोइंग टू बी हेल्पफुल फॉर द जेनरल स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ इंग्लिश लिटरेचर एज वेल लेट्स मूव ऑन टू द क्वेश्चन फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन स्पेंसर्स वन डे आई रोट हर नेम अपॉन द स्ट्रैंड इज टेकन फ्रॉम विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग वर्क ऑप्शन सर फर्स्ट द शेपर्स कैलेंडर सेकेंड एमोरिटी थर्ड द फेरी क्वीन एंड फोर्थ एपिथेलमियन द करेक्ट आंसर इज एमोरिटी वन डे आई रोट हर नेम अपॉन द स्ट्रैंड इज सेवेंटी फिफ्थ नंबर सोनेट ऑफ दिस कलेक्शन ऑफ सोनेट सिक्वेंस कॉल्ड एमोरिटी नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन बट केम द वेब्स एंड वॉश टिट अवे विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग फिगर्स ऑफ स्पीच इज यूज इन द अब लाइन द ऑप्शन सर फर्स्ट एलिटरेशन सेकेंड पर्सनिफिकेशन थर्ड पैथेटिक फैलसी एंड फोर्थ ऑक्जीमोरन द करेक्ट आंसर इज पर्सनिफिकेशन हियर वेव इज पर्सनिफाइड एज इफ इट्स कमिंग एज अ ह्यूमन बींग एंड वॉशिंग अवे द एंडिवर ऑफ द पोएट सो वेब्स an inanimate object rather an element of nature is given here and human attributes a case of personification question number 3 vain man said he that doest in vain assay what is the meaning of the word vain in the above line the options are first futile second proud conceitedly third little and the last option is fruitless the correct answer is the second option that is proud conceitedly here in this line vain man said she that doest in vain essay we find a pun uh, where these two veins uh, have two different meaning the first vein v a y a n e vain means proud whereas the second vein means futile here you find that the lady love is rebuking the lover for doing a vain attempt to immortalize the name of the beloved by writing in on the seashore question number 4 what is the central theme of spencer's one day i wrote her name upon the strand the options are first time takes away everything in its course second love can be immortalized through poetry third time and waves are very powerful and the last option it is a futile attempt to immortalize love the correct answer is the second option that is love can be immortalized through poetry in the poem we find a debate where the lady love is rebuking the beloved as he is trying to immortalize the beloved by writing her name in the seashore whereas we find the lover is giving a counter argument by saying that poetry has the power to immortalize love next question and in the heavens write your glorious name why did the poet choose heaven to write the name of his beloved the options are first in heaven they will meet after their death option 2 in heaven death will be unable to subdue it option 3 heaven is beyond any earthly feelings and the last option is heaven is far away from the sea beach the correct answer is the second one that is in heaven death will be unable to subdue it so uh, when they are in heaven so they are beyond death so death don't have the power to take away everything uh, in that heavenly world so that's why the lover has chosen 
heaven to write the name of his beloved. Next question. A mortal thing so to immortalize. What does the word mortal thing refer to in the above line? The options are the name of the beloved on the seashore. Second, the beloved himself. Third, the love. And the last option, the lover. The correct answer is the beloved himself. Uh, in the second uh, quatrain of the sonnet, we find that the beloved is rebuking the uh, lover for writing her name on the seashore. Okay. Uh, she is ultimately giving the reason that like that name which the lover has uh, you know, written on the seashore, the beloved himself is a subject to decay. One day time will take away uh, everything including herself. So that's why here you find that she is rebuking the, the lover and, and here uh, uh, it refers to the beloved himself. Next question. Which of the following archaic words is not used in Spencer's one day I wrote her name upon the strand? Options are first vain, second sans, third code and fourth ache. The correct answer is sans. Sans is actually not an archaic word, it is actually a French word means without. Uh, apart from this particular word vain, code and ache, these are all used in the poem. Next question, whom does a Spencer's one day I wrote her name upon the strand addressed? The options are first Penelope, second Elizabeth Boyle, third Beatrice and fourth Laura. Uh, the correct answer is the second one that is Elizabeth Boyle. Penelope de Verrux is the lady love of Sir Philip Sidney and Sidney's Astrophel and Stella is addressed to her. Beatrice is the lady love of Dante and Laura is the beloved of uh, Petra uh, whom he addressed his sonnet sequence. Uh, Elizabeth Boyle is the, the lady love and the wife of Spencer whom his sonnet sequence uh, Amority is addressed to and also the marriage hymn Epithalamian is, is written uh, celebrating the marriage. Next question. My verse your virtues rare shall eternize. Which of the following figures of speech is used in the above line? The options are first personification, second inversion, third oxymoron, four onomatopoeia. The correct answer is inversion. In the line, my words, your virtues rare shall eternize, we find that the phrase virtues rare, uh, here the uh, correct grammatical order of words are, are inverted. Uh, in spite of rare virtues, here virtues rare is used. So, it is a case of inversion. Question number 10. Vain man, said she, that doest in vain assay. What is the meaning of the word assay in above line? The options are first pain, second attempt, third hope and the last option is aim. The correct answer is attempt. Here in this line, we we'll find that the lady love is actually telling the beloved that uh, he is making a futile attempt. Uh, in his effort to immortalize the beloved. Okay. So, assay means attempt. Next question. What is the meaning of amority? The collection from which one day I wrote her name upon the strand is taken. The options are little hopes, second little loves, third small emotions and fourth small aims. The correct answer is the second one that is little loves. Amority means little loves. Question number 12. What is the number of one day I wrote her name upon the strand in Spencer's Amority? The options are first 1, second 75, third 73 and fourth 118. The correct answer is second one that is 75. One day I wrote her name upon the strand appears as Sonnet number 75 in Spencer's Amority, uh, which is a collection of 88 sonnets. Question number 13. Which of the following lines work as Volta in Spencer's One Day I Wrote Her Name 
upon the strand. First, but came the waves and washed it away. Second, not so could I let baser things devise. Option third, our love shall live and later life renew. And the last option, and ache my name be wiped out likewise. The correct answer is the second one that is not so could I let baser things devise. Volta is the point of turning, the point where the poem turns from problem to solutions. Here we find uh, at the ninth line uh, uh, the poem uh, turns in a different direction uh, when the lover counters the argument of the beloved. Question number 14. And ache my name be wiped out likewise. What is the meaning of the word ache in the above line? The options are first but, second also, third yet and fourth so. The correct answer is also. Ache is an archaic word, it means also. Last question. Again, I wrote it with a second hand. What does the word eat in the above line refer to? The options are the address of the beloved, option 2, the name of the beloved, option 3, the passion of the poet and 4, the name of the lover himself. The correct answer is the second one, that is the name of the beloved. Uh, in this line, we find that the lover, uh, when he first wrote the name of the beloved on the seashore, the waves came and wave washed it away, then he wrote it on a second time. So, it refers to the name of the beloved. Though one day I wrote her name upon the strand is a short poem, a sonnet of 14 lines. But these 15 MCQs are not enough. Apart from these, many questions, many multiple choice questions can be framed from the poem. The only way is to read the poem in every detail. We need to understand each words of the poem. We need to understand the figures of speech that are used throughout the poem. For that, I have a separate video. If you feel interested, you may go to that video. The link is in the description box to understand the poem in a new perspective. Thank you very much for watching the video.